In this week's video, I've come to a rocky beach to look for some abstract macro scenes. Let's start off by taking a look at the shots we're gonna get. little bit of beach I've come to it probably has a name I don't know what it is it's sort of between I guess New Haven and Cramond sort of north of Edinburgh but it's really interesting because it's got sand as you might expect a lot of beaches to have but it's also got all of this like old rubble all this like broken bits of masonry bits of brick bits of wall bits of old I don't know what that's all obviously been you know, taken from maybe building sites, taken from wherever. And it's been brought here, I guess, as a way of like building up the sandbank, building up the um, kind of the defenses against um, the water, at least that's my assumption. If anyone knows any better, then do please let me know. In one of my recent videos, I talked quite a bit about doing macro in the forest and how sometimes if you're walking many, many miles, covering a lot of ground, it can be quite difficult to find those macro subjects. So what I'm doing today is basically just giving myself this little stretch of beach. It's maybe, I don't know, 100 yards, that's the whole thing. And that means it's much easier to really scour that one section, looking for those tiny details that might make for interesting macro shots. And I thought this kind of area presents a very different but still interesting macro challenge than being out there in the forest, being out in, in uh, nature as it were, because I'm not looking for things like insects or wildlife. I'm not looking for flowers or mushrooms to make interesting macro subjects. I'm looking for interesting details, interesting textures, compositions within these little bits of broken masonry. There's so many cool, intricate little details. Some of them, you know, these tiny little pictures, because obviously we're going for macro. We're going to be working up close. And I don't know, I just kind of thought there might be some good opportunities here. Something a little bit more creative, something a little bit more abstract, perhaps. What I'm realizing when I'm actually looking closer at this whole area is that it is incredibly chaotic. There is stuff absolutely everywhere. It's all over the place. And it's very difficult to actually find those little scenes within that chaos that might actually make for a nice photo. So I found a scene that I think I quite like, and it's with these bricks here, because we've got this whole, what looks like a section of bit of wall here, we've got this nice sort of sea-worn brick on the left, and we've got these little bits of uh, leaves, a little bit of plant kind of growing out of it. So I actually think that this works quite well. It's got that element of both like nature coming back that I was looking for. It's also got like very much the um, sort of the broken down bits that um, is exactly why I've come here. So I think this has some promise as a shot. So the composition that I have lined up at the moment really focuses on these bricks. I love this strong line going diagonally through the scene. Um, I think this will probably work quite well as a five by four crop, just bringing in, you know, getting rid of these sort of dead grasses down here and a little bit of this wasted space at the top. It might even work well as a one-to-one, -one, as a square crop. I'm going at F8 ISO 100 because I'm on a tripod, focusing in the middle. And there's my shot. So I've taken one photo. It's a good start because honestly, I was getting to the point where I was thinking <laughs> I'm not going to get any photo. And that actually sometimes can be my biggest problem. Maybe other photographers will recognize that in that once you come to an area, if you don't immediately start seeing photos, then you can quickly become quite disheartened and a little bit, oh no, this isn't what I hoped at all, what a shame. And that actually presents an even bigger barrier, meaning that it's less likely that you're then going to find the photos that you want. Something I struggle with quite a lot, um, just that sort of negativity, maybe it's self-doubt, I don't know, but it's, it doesn't help. Um, and usually I find that once I get one shot in, that I go, oh, okay, yeah, 
now I remember why I'm coming here, now I remember what I'm doing. Then it starts the ball rolling and that's when I start to see more photos, that's when I start to, um, I suppose, just get a little bit more creative. So I'm hoping that now I've got one shot, I'm going to start seeing some more, hopefully, better ones, because it's not a great shot. It is not world class, it is not award winning, but sometimes it doesn't have to be. Sometimes it is just about coming out and enjoying getting the shots. And that is exactly what I'm doing. I'm having a lovely time before the rain sets in. And I think I've found a potential shot here as well. What I really like, these three bits of brick, old worn brick, and we've got these lovely vibrant green leaves going right across. So I framed up a composition that I think really shows those off um, just like this. Um, you can see what it is. It's maybe not the most thrilling of shot, but I do actually really quite like this. So I'm going ISO 100 again, F9, and that's at a sixth of a second. Obviously I'm using quite slow shutter speeds. It's not particularly bright out this morning. And with wide, uh, so with narrow apertures for the maximum focus, I do need to make sure that my camera is on a tripod. So I'm gonna tap to focus. And I'm quite pleased with that shot pretty easy here we've got this lovely ocean smoothed bit of brick this one here I think was just is a really nice quite simple composition I quite like finding simple composition something that's a little bit more minimal but doesn't have too much going on and that's difficult to find here in amongst all this chaos but I think it's all the more satisfying when you do so this is what I was looking for down on the beach. I found this bit of brick with some of this lettering just peeking out from behind this glistening seaweed. I'm having to hold onto my tripod slightly because if I let it go, my camera will fall. Not the most stable. But this is the shot that I'm going for. Again, probably gonna be a five by four or a square crop. So that has been narrowing up the top and the bottom. Didn't mean to take the photo, but spoiler alert, that's what the photo will look like. Um, I really like the way that the rock is, you know, it's, it's buried one side with the um, beach itself. The other side it's covered by the seaweed. So it's a really nice example of how in this area, this kind of urban masonry element blends completely with the more natural surroundings. So I'm just gonna to tap to focus on the brick and there's our shot. Lovely shell in this little bit of water, positioning it in the lower thirds of the frame. I'm going for a wide aperture this time in order to make sure that my background is a little bit more blurred. Um, I put my ISO back down to 100 and probably an exposure somewhere around there. Tap to focus on the shell, and there's my shot. I've just been walking up and down this little stretch of beach and there's not loads that's particularly standing out to me. I think it's because everything is pretty much different shades of uh, brown for the most part. There's the odd little bit of green that's sort of poking out, but it's nothing that's really standing out in terms of interesting compositions. So I think I'm going to go back to where it was a little bit more rocky and masonry and hopefully find something a bit more interesting there. So in this scene, I really like that we've got this sort of bit of old masonry here with all its patterns. And then above it, we've got all these lovely sort of flowing lines of the sand. Uh, I think it's a really nice combination of textures. So again, I'm going F8, tap into focus, and there we go. And then this scene's just caught my eye because we've got these lovely undulations of the rock here and then we've got this lone little um, limpet here. Obviously we've got the um, seaweed around it. So what I've framed up is this shot where those rocks are cutting these really nice diagonals through the scene. The uh, limpet itself is nicely positioned in the top right third. Tap to focus. interesting textures are a great thing to focus on for macro photography because they are pretty much everywhere particularly at places like beaches because you've got all of the sand you've got all the textures of the rocks you've got things like seaweed you've got shells and limpets there's always some interesting texture to be found and often that can make for really really nice shots 
I mean, I love the way that we've got all these lovely lines of the sand going down here. We've got these gorgeous, almost like elephant skin rocks. And even then on the rocks, we've got all these tiny little barnacles and limpets all over. So once you kind of get close and study a scene like this, you realize that there is so much to be photographed once you take a much more close up view. probably a square or four by five again. We've got lovely little shell down here. We've got the nice big bit of sea-worn brick and we've even got some nice water around it. So I'm gonna to tap to focus on the shell, F8, no, F11, an eight for the second. And there we go. This huge piece of concrete has got all this old woodwork in it, some of which has been burned, it's all sort of trapped within this uh, within the concrete so i found this little seam it's got these two pieces crisscrossing really nicely in the middle got all this nice detail with little bits of lichens it's a really nice scene so f11 there we go So I don't think this is exactly the most productive day of macro shooting I've had. In fact, quite a few of the shots I've taken, strictly speaking, probably aren't even macro. There'd definitely be some purists who will be saying, absolutely, that's not a macro shot. How dare you call this a macro video? But, you know, but I've got some stuff and I've got it in an area that I just don't think you would ever think twice about coming to in order to take photos. Like there is definitely some interesting subject matter here. And actually it's an area that I think does better with macro when you are getting up close, looking for those small compositions rather than trying to take wide landscapes. This is not a beautiful beach. It's not a very uh, nice area to look at. And so wide shots really aren't gonna do a whole lot here. You know, there's an industrial estate just there. You know, this is not a, pretty part of um, Edinburgh um, and so but I think it does show that you don't always need the prettiest places to get cool photos I definitely think that I've got a few shots that I'm quite pleased with here so yeah I'm calling it a bit of a success and if nothing else it's got me out it's got me taking photos without having to drive hours into the countryside and that is always a bonus and I just think it goes to show that if you look hard enough you can find macro anywhere you want. <laughs>